Okay, welcome back. So, I think we might be able to finish this one up. I'm going through this one a little bit faster because we've already done a couple of videos on this uh, on this topic. So, hopefully I'm not going through this too quickly. Uh, but let's, let's move forward. So, let's finish up our ANOVA table and we'll have to do our regression statistics here at the same time. Because if you look at what's there in that ANOVA output, all we have is SST and, and degrees of freedom. That's really not enough to do anything else with. But if we look up in the regression statistics, well, here we do have, oops, we do have this multiple R, or this correlation coefficient, and we can take advantage of that. And we can use that to get the R squared. Because I know that that R, that is just equal to the, uh, the square root of the R squared. Uh, plus the sine, I always forget, the sine of the slope. So this is a positive, because this was a positive. And so in order to get our R squared, all we have to do is square that correlation coefficient, or the multiple R. So if we have, get this out of the way, so our multiple R is 0.84. If I square that, there's my R squared is, let's just call it 71. So this is 0, 071. Okay, so what can we do with that now? Well, the R squared, this is SSR over SST. Ah, now we can start to see how this puzzle is going to come together. Remember that R squared, it tells us a measure of goodness of fit. So this, this estimated regression equation, this captures 71% of the variation in our dependent variables. So this happiness index, uh, or the, sorry, the years married, explains 71% of the variation uh, in overall happiness. Uh, so we can use that information, that 0.71, uh, to calculate the rest of our ANOVA table, really. Because if this R squared is 0.71. This is equal to SSR divided by SST. Well, we have SST. It is 750. So if we solve for SSR, SSR is just going to be 0.71 times 750. So 532 and a half. Oops, wrong one, 532.5. Good, now for SSE, there's really two ways that we can find SSE. One is to take advantage of the fact that SSR, sorry, that R squared can also be calculated like this. It's either R squared is the percentage of total variation that our, our regression explains, or one minus the percentage of variation that our regression doesn't explain. Uh, or we can also take advantage of the relationship that SST is the sum of SSR plus SSE. So if I rearrange this and I solve for SSE, well, I have 750 is SST minus SSR 532.5. So SSE is 217.5. There, all that just from R squared and SST. So our mean square, so this is 532 divided by one. This is gonna be 532.5. MSE, this is gonna be 217.5 divided by its degrees of freedom, which in an earlier video we identified as being three, so this divided by three, 72.5, oops, 72.5. Okay, and this gives us now our F statistic, uh, 532.5 divided by 72.5. And so here we'll have 532.5 divided by 72.5, so 7.34. And this is an F distribution with one degree of freedom in the numerator, three degrees of freedom in the denominator. And so if we go to our F tables, there's three, there's one. 
our test statistic is 7.34. So that's somewhere. 7.34 is right in here somewhere. So that means our p-value is something greater than 0.5. Greater than 0.5. And really, that's what we expect, that it be greater than 0.5. Let me write this in over here. Because this is a simple linear regression. The p-value for the f-test is always going to be exactly the same as the p-value for the t-test on the slope, this one right here. So that's good. We have consistent results. This is exactly what we expect. Okay, filling in the rest of our regression statistics. Uh, let's see, observations. Oh, this got deleted somewhere. We have five observations. That standard error, so this one here, this is just the square root of MSE. MSE, we calculated earlier to be 72.5. So if we just take the square root, 72, oops, 72.5, square root that, and I have 8.5. 8, oops. So this is going to be 8.5. Okay, and there's our complete table. That went a little bit faster than the previous ones. Hopefully, it all uh, it all makes sense. It's really, the trick in these is just understanding how all of these different things are related to each other, and being able to manipulate the formulas to solve for what's missing. So the last part of this problem, we'll just quickly use the estimated regression equation, develop a confidence interval estimate for the average happiness for somebody who is married for 20 years. Okay, so let's uh, scroll down here just a little bit. I want, uh, I'm gonna need our estimated regression equation, 60.47 plus 0.63x. We're gonna need this S is 8.5. And we're also going to need one more little bit of information that we don't yet have calculated, but I think I can see a shortcut uh, as to how to get it. So let me just scroll down a little bit here. And, oops. and what we'll do, so we're developing here a confidence interval for the average happiness of two people who have been married for 20 years. So what we're looking at is we have our estimated regression equation. Now, you know, we've already identified this slope coefficient as not being statistically significant. So in fact, the rest of this analysis, I suppose you could argue is not really relevant given that we've already identified that the relationship doesn't exist. Let's just overlook that for the sake of, you know, let's get some practice in, in doing these calculations. So what we're gonna be looking at, we have our estimated regression equation. We need to, calculate what is our point estimate uh, of the level of happiness of a couple who have been married for 20 years. So we need that point estimate. And so this is going to be 60.47, 63 times 20. And so we can find out what that point estimate is, the, the happiness index that corresponds with somebody who's been married for 20 years 60.47 plus 0.63 times 20. So that's a 73.07 on that index. 73, let's just keep it at 73. Okay, 73.1. Now, the confidence interval, well, given that, of course, there's uncertainty around those coefficients, those parameter estimates, we want to figure out what's that confidence interval for the, the, the interval estimate for the average happiness index for somebody who's been married for 20 years. Now, the formula for that, it's that point estimate plus or minus the critical value times S, which is why I copied S down here, one over N plus, and this is X star minus X bar squared over this and this is the part, this piece in the denominator is the part that uh, can be tedious to calculate. Now, 
there's actually a shortcut here if we know what to look for. Uh, doing that calculation would take a fair, well, not a lot of time, but it would take a fair bit of time. What we can take advantage of here is, well, we have this standard error and we have this S. How are those related? Well, the standard error, SBI, the standard error of that slope coefficient, it's equal to the standard error of the regression divided by this thing here. Actually, it's divided by the square root of that thing there. So we have enough information here to solve for it without having to do too, too much work. So I have that standard error is 0.23. That standard error of the regression is 8.5 divided by this big ugly thing. So if we just solve for that, there's my calculator. So this is going to be 8.5 divided by 0.23 is 36.95, but we have to square that because that's our square root. So if we square this, I have 1365.78. So let me get some room here, get this out of the way, 1365. So this piece here is equal to 13, 1365, do we want a decimal, 0.8. So now that saves us a little bit of work. We have now our point estimate was 73.1. That critical value, that's three degrees of freedom. We've used this one a few times before. This is 3.182. That standard error was 8.5. Square root of one over, we have five observations, plus this piece here, this level of interest in the independent variable was 20 x bar we have way up here i should have written this down x bar is is 31.8 divided by this piece we just calculated is 1365.8 okay let's clear some room so let's calculate that uh, margin of error okay so 20 minus 31.8 squared divided by 1365.8 plus 1 over 5 square root that and times it by 8.5 and times that by 3.182 and there's our margin of errors, 14.86. So we have 73.1 plus or minus, what did I just say, 14.86. Let's call it 14.9. So our confidence interval estimate, 73.1. That upper limit, if I add 73.1, Upper limit is 80, let's call it 88. And the lower limit, 73.1 minus 14.9, the lower limit is 58. So over here we have this upper limit is 88, and this lower limit is 58. So for a couple who's been married for 20 years, the average happiness in terms of this index is 73.1. Our 95% confidence interval says that we're 95% confident that the average happiness index for a couple who's been married for 20 years is between 58 and 88. Okay, good. That's that. Hopefully that all makes sense. Now, I understand we had already identified this as being an insignificant relationship. That's okay. We can keep this in make-believe world uh, just, to, just to illustrate how we do these calculations. Okay, so I hope that this was helpful. Thank you very much for watching. Bye-bye.